I'm from Silicon Valley, so if we just talked about Silicon Valley, I'm actually half German, half French, so I, I root for Europe, but I spend a lot of time in the US as part of Silicon Valley. I actually run just for you, um, I was part of engineering, not as deep as you are, but more on the system level, but I basically run the services organization. So I build um, IoT system, I build, I digitize companies, we work with GM, we work with India to digitize India, and I'm going to do a step back and try to understand and, and share with you why do I think that the network is very important and whatever is going to happen if we don't embrace it Proactively and creatively, we're going to create an, an issue for ourselves. So there's lots of opportunity, but there's also risk. So very quickly, that's me. I'm uh, basically, for the last eight years, we built the most complex systems around, uh, around the world. I mean, just to give you a view, we, we work with Vodafone on Gigabit Society, but we also work um, on digitizing India. So we're building a network at the moment for a billion users, but the network has been scaled to actually uh, go for a trillion devices. So we're building from scratch a network to be able to do that. And that's really sort of important um, because the network is at the center of everything we do. But in order to explain this, let me go a step back and go back to the presentation. We have innovation centers around the world. And in this innovation centers, we invite startups, we invite uh, uh, companies, and we basically try to define exactly this. We, we just heard that steel industry will not be disrupted. Steel industry will be disrupted. In this inno innovation center, we're printing cars, right? You don't need steel, you print cars from scratch. Um, we are basically looking at, um, at digitizing elevators. We would have thought that the, and the biggest elevator company on earth are coming to us and say, what can we do to digitize elevators? And I have this picture, if you wonder, I have four kids. This is my number two kid. He's a complete nerd, Python programmer, 16. He's going to go and work in this open innovation center, and he's super excited. That's, an, that's a center where you go in. You, don't have a, you have a facial scan to go in. It, it reads on how much the people, how, how, how high the voice tension is to adapt the lighting. You go to the restroom. It basically tells you if you're ill or you're not ill. It's really a connected sort of, um, um, sort of building. And my son loves it. He's really, really excited. Now, the other part to the story is my wife is a judge. She's a German judge, and she's really, really scared of what's happening. She's scared of where my son goes, what my son does, and what we as Cisco do. So both of them came to me yesterday and said, uh, so, Cedric, why is Cisco in this? What is Cisco doing, and what is the importance of you? Why, what are, where are you going with this? And in order to tell you where we're going, because we just had this amazingly sort of energetic uh, presentation from a professor, we have to go back to see where Cisco came from. We basically were created 30 years ago, 30 years ago by two professors in Stanford. And the two professors in Stanford had one problem. And their problem is that they couldn't have their email servers communicate with each other. There was one on Apple and one on DEC, and they couldn't sort of communicate with each other. And they had a cat, they had a cat they had to feed. And the first thing they were thinking of is, how can I connect these disparate networks? So in order to feed their cats, they invented the multi-protocol router, right? That's why Cisco was created not to change the world, it was to feed a cat. <laughs> so just the, the potential which exists in there, um, I'm going to go there and you th you're thinking, where is this going? So where is it going? It basically means that when we look at the network, the network is as a base of connecting things which meet, might be very, very differently. And I'm, I'm sort of comparing, and I think you alluded to it, we're going to go into an area where the network starts to be very similar to a human brain, where you build connections, where basically you take an information, you try to understand it, and you build sort of information out of this. And if we look at the, at the internet, we were in 1969, where there were four devices, we're sort of the intelligence of a jellyfish, if you compare the synapses. In 2008, we were sort of like, um, in, uh, sort of the, the, the connections of a mouse. In 2015, we have 16 point, what is it, 16.3 billion devices, 3.5 times more devices than human beings. So the connections we're starting to build are really sort of um, complex, but this is just the beginning. What I'm trying to, you had a, a picture of sort of evolution of, of the flexible environment, same thing. The internet as the basis, the network as the basis, will become even more accelerated, more complex, and, and give a lot of options to be able to do so. Because fundamentally, the network is accelerating. We have Metcalfe's law, which fundamentally says the more devices you connect to a network, the more value the network has. Now, we had our chairman, which is John Chambers, which basically said, it's not about connecting networks. It's how much things do you connect to the network which have intelligence, which have information, you can actually share. So it's the idea of sharing this information which actually builds the, um, the environment and the, the capability to do so. Because when you do this, it's not only 
what, how much you, you connect the networks, so the network we're building are so much more scalable, and we're talking 5G, there's also so many more different devices we're going to connect. Now, the important part, and we might or might not disagree on this one, is the way we're going to connect this, this, these networks are going to be very different. We call it near enough is good enough. We're going to have low-powered access. We're going to have Etsy-type access. We, we're, we're working at the moment with um, an energy company where your energy meter tweets the status of, of how much energy you have over Wi-Fi. So it's a tweeter feed which actually gets the access. So the environment is... The, 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 the size of the networks increase dramatically, but the diversity of the network will also increase dramatically, which actually means quite a bit of changes from an engineering point of view on how do you build this, because you don't control it the same way. And the last part is you're generating so much more information. 90% of the digital information which has been generated in the last two years is as much as was generated all the time before. So the volume which is generated at the moment in those networks, in those environments, is gigantic. Now, the difference is 80 to 90% of this, this information will be unstructured. And most of this information will be useless after two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. So the only way where we basically build a network which was connecting a couple of PCs and, and having it very centralized, the networks of the futures will be very decentralized. We, 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 we're talking about data centers, moving from data centers to centers of data. More and more of this information will be sort of adapted at, at the edge of the network. So what does it mean? It means that we're, if we're looking at IoT, which is driving a digitalization, we're to mo at, the, at the moment at the crawl stage, right? You have your Fitbit, you have your Nest, you have one sensor, one application. That's how you basically design the current networks. We're now moving to the next stage, which is you're connecting many things. You're connecting with location-enabled apps, so Amazon Echo, which is coming out, you're basically capable of, of pulling multiple of those sensors together and making sense of the different sensors, which is where the network company becomes and the network becomes super irrelevant because you start pulling, building a platform to do that. To the future, which is where we're going to go, where there's going to be many things, many apps, multiple times a second. So the speed of the reaction will increase dramatically. So what I was saying is that the network is important because it's going gonna, it's gonna to connect everything. Everything we're going to connect is going to be very different but the intelligence of the network will be distributed. If we build a platform on top of it to be able to enable really the digitization, that's when really sort of the difference sort of um, um, uh, happens. Now, this is uh, Jeff Immelt, which basically says every company which is not embracing that everything is gonna be connected and you, we're building this um, huge amount of data, goes to bed as a traditional industry company, goes up and is either a software or analytics company, or will not survive. That's a very important message. If you look at what Tesla is doing to the auto industry, Tesla is a services company. If you look, we talked about Airbnb, what it does to the hotel industry, Airbnb has more value, valuation at the moment than the whole of any hotel chain in the world. Same will happen to every industry which we're going through. We, we built a chart basically saying that this will happen. So either you embrace this and you understand that, or you will be sort of going forward. And, and the examples are, just going to go, it, it, it changes cities. So we're working with Barcelona at the moment. With Barcelona, we digitized the city of Barcelona. We created 50,000 jobs. And this is very simple things like the connected lighting or the, uh, the trash can, the connected trash can. It, it sounds very simple and dumb, but it saves $50 million and it saves CO2 because you only go there when, when the trash can is empty. So the ecosystem we're creating, we're doing this and we're actually doing this in Barcelona. We're doing the city of Hamburg but we're also doing this in India or in Saudi Arabia. So we're connecting those cities. The other one, we talked about um, steel industry. So one application we're doing the steel industry, one of the issues with the people which are in the furnaces is that they are endangered by heat stroke. We're capable of monitoring basically the engineers which are in the, in the furnaces. And by, by doing big analytics and data, we can actually predict when the heat stroke is coming and pull these people off. If you didn't do this before, what happened is you would have a, a heat stroke, you would be off for two weeks, and this would be bad for the person and, and the business. Now that we're capable of sort of interconnecting this, that creates that value also. The other one is, is we're working with, it's lower technology, but we're embedding in every, uh, in every horn of, uh, I don't know, uh, of, of, of a rhino, we, we're embedding basically a chip and a sensor which is monitored by satellite. If that gets dis disconnected, there's an immediate sort of um, uh, element to be able to address this. 
Another example is driverless mines. We are in the mining industry in uh, Canada where you have oil sands and 300 of the biggest lorries are being driven. We made them completely wirelessly driven to be able to not sort of put the people in danger. There's lots of those applications. Some of them, and we talked about saving energy by using chips which are more effective. We're at the moment, because we can shift data center loads, we can understand that there's more wind, let's say in northern Germany, so there's green energy, and we could shift the, uh, the compute power up north to be able to do so. So overall, what, we, what are we saying? The network increases, the diversity of the network increases, the capability of the network increases, and there's a lot of value which we create by, by, by the ability to do so. Now let me give you a counterpoint. We, are we, we have seen a digitized hospital. This is a hospital in, um, in the US. Who knows ransomware here? Anyone knows? Can you just tell me if you know ransomware? All right, one person. If you get an email which has ransomware, you're in trouble. So ransomware is basically, it's an industry of people which will encrypt your data, will have a bot, goes to your data, encrypt the data, and you basically will get this screen. If you get this screen, you're in trouble. All of your personal files will be encrypted, and if you don't pay within 24 hours, if your personal 10,000 euros, or if you're an industry of million dollars, the, da the data will be destroyed. They even have a hotline that explain to you on how to do this on Bitcoin. This happened to a hospital in the US. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going forward, but this is really the danger, is that the data which is being exposed, because we make everything digital, there's a whole industry which is going to be created to take advantage of it. So I was explaining that we're making all of this energy, um, all of this data sort of available. There's complete industry which are being created to take advantage of it. The difference which we have in the digitization of industries and the digitization of all information is that we're actually going from the virtual world into the physical world. Your car will now be connected. Your pacemaker will be connected. Everything will be sawn in into your, into your, um, into your suit. Because we're doing this, we're expanding basically the attack level of, of where uh, the internet um, can actually be um, going forward. And we need to understand that the responsibility we have to be able to do this is, is increasing. I, I talked about my wife and my son. My son sees just the potentials which this brings with us. My wife sees all the risk and she's right. The, the question is, is how do we protect personal data? How do we make sure that this doesn't get hacked? How do we make sure because it has such an impact on our personal life that we can actually react towards it. It's, um, as I was saying, it's, uh, the journey has been uh, um, quite, uh, quite in this direction. Is it's not going to be stopped. I mean, we're, we're, I mean, we're a Silicon Valley firm, and we're investing, and you are investing in building these networks, which has these huge environments. We will go to every industry, and this industry will be transformed. So either we proactively work with, um, with academia or with you in the industry to be able to understand on how to to minimize the risk, or we will be in danger, because all of those things will have much higher threat of being sort of hacked. So we need to really understand what do we need to do to be able to drive this, how do we secure it, and how do we make sure that we have this, this dialogue to actually drive it forward. Because at some stage, we will have more than a trillion, it's my son again, but we will have more than a trillion connections, um, and which is similar to the human brain, with intelligence as much as distributed, and we have a responsibility um, to, to be able to engage it, to drive it, but also to react to it. So this was thought as a sort of starting the conversation which we will have um, in, uh, in, in, in the environment. And just to give you also a view and answering a couple of questions, why is the network important? Because it's the base of everything we do. Without the network, we couldn't connect. The network is changing dramatically, and the information we will create needs to be secured and thought through because this is the, um, the scale of, of, of what we're playing in. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.